Welcome back everyone. Molten salt reactors are entering real construction phases across Europe as engineers turn decades of laboratory work into functional pilot plants. These designs use liquid salt as both coolant and fuel carrier, operating at low pressure and high temperature. The result is a system that can safely shut down without power and achieve thermal efficiencies beyond standard reactors. Several European companies are already testing heat exchangers, control rods, and drain tanks built for long-term reliability. The transition from paper design to hardware is now visible, and it shows a shift toward modular factory production rather than traditional on-site builds. Please subscribe now. A molten salt reactor contains no solid fuel rods. The fissile material, often uranium dissolved in a fluoride or chloride salt, circulates through the core. When neutrons strike the dissolved uranium, fission occurs directly in the moving fluid. Because the salt expands with temperature, it naturally regulates the reaction. There is no water under high pressure, and therefore no risk of a steam explosion. The salt's boiling point is extremely high, which allows the reactor to run near atmospheric pressure while still producing outlet temperatures over 600 degrees Celsius. This thermal headroom makes advanced turbines and industrial heating possible. The core structure usually consists of a graphite or silicon carbide lattice that slows neutrons and guides the fuel through channels. Pumps push the molten mixture through heat exchangers, where energy transfers to a separate, non-radioactive salt loop. That loop then drives either a steam cycle or a supercritical carbon dioxide turbine. Because the radioactive and non-radioactive salts are separated, maintenance becomes simpler. The entire system stays compact and all the coolant remains liquid at every stage of operation. Materials research centers in France, Germany and the Netherlands are testing corrosion-resistant alloys for these salt environments. If power is lost, the system relies on passive physics to reach a safe state. At the bottom of the reactor sits a frozen plug of salt kept solid by a small cooling fan. When power stops, the fan shuts down, the plug melts and the hot salt drains by gravity into shielded tanks designed to spread and cool the material. The chain reaction halts instantly because the geometry no longer supports criticality. As the salt cools, it hardens into a solid mass that traps fission products. This safety approach requires no moving parts or external power, only the natural behavior of heat and gravity. Salt chemistry is vital to long-term performance. Fission generates gases such as xenon and krypton, and these can reduce reactor efficiency if they're not removed. The systems include off-gas lines and chemical monitoring loops that strip these gases continuously. Sensors keep track of the oxidation state of the salt, and operators add small corrective materials to maintain the right balance. Corrosion tests at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology and the French Atomic Energy Commission have shown that stable salt composition is the key to decades of operation. Online purification, gas removal and temperature control make molten salt reactors just as much a chemical plant as a nuclear one. Denmark has become a centre of progress. Seaborg Technologies is developing the compact molten salt reactor, which is designed to be mounted on floating barges. Each barge will contain multiple sealed modules and a power block delivering hundreds of megawatts. Construction happens in shipyards, where quality control is high and weather is irrelevant. Meanwhile, Copenhagen Atomics is working on a smaller modular design that's intended for industrial heat rather than large grid power. Their goal is to supply factories with zero carbon, high temperature heat on demand. Both companies aim to demonstrate full-scale operation within the next few years and scale production through standardized manufacturing. In the United Kingdom, Multex Flex is building a molten salt reactor that can adjust power output to match renewable generation swings. The concept separates the nuclear core from the salt used for heat storage, which allows the plant to act as both a reactor and a battery. When renewable electricity is abundant, the reactor can store excess heat. When demand rises, it can deliver power instantly without thermal stress. This kind of flexibility suits European grids that now depend heavily on wind and solar. Multex Flex is collaborating with national labs and component suppliers to qualify materials, coatings and pump systems for long service life. 
the construction schedule for Europe's first operating molten salt units extends through the second half of this decade. Seaborg plans a pilot barge around 2027. Copenhagen Atomics intends to start testing their full salt loop and fuel handling line within the same time frame. Multexflex expects to complete a prototype heat transfer loop in the United Kingdom before full licensing. These milestones depend on regulatory reviews, component testing and industrial certification, but each company is now ordering real hardware. The race is not about whether molten salt reactors work, but which design will achieve commercial readiness first. A key attraction of molten salt reactors is their ability to integrate with multiple industries. They can generate power, produce hydrogen, or deliver direct process heat for steel, cement, and chemical plants. Because they operate at consistent high temperature, efficiency stays high even at partial load. European research groups in Italy and Switzerland are modeling integration with district heating and hydrogen electrolysis. Thermal storage tanks filled with clean salt can retain energy for hours or days. This multi-use capability helps justify investment by serving both the power grid and industrial markets from the same reactor type. Europe's regulatory systems are adapting. The United Kingdom's Office for Nuclear Regulation uses a staged approval known as Generic Design Assessment to review modular reactors before siting. Denmark, though not previously a nuclear nation, is establishing a framework to evaluate molten salt designs. France and Germany participate in shared testing under Euratom research programs. The European Commission funds corrosion and chemistry studies to align safety standards. This coordinated environment allows small national teams to share data, making the path faster than it would be in isolation. Licensing progress now moves in parallel with component fabrication. The fuel cycle for these reactors can evolve toward thorium. Early versions will use low enriched uranium because it is already approved under existing regulations. Later units can add thorium fluoride to breed uranium-233 closing the fuel loop and reducing waste. Chloride salt systems operating in a fast neutron spectrum could consume plutonium from retired fuel stockpiles. This adaptability lets each country match its resources. Orano in France and the United Kingdom's National Nuclear Laboratory are studying compatible reprocessing steps to extract valuable isotopes and stabilize waste salt for long-term storage. Material qualification remains one of the hardest challenges. The salt mixture must not corrode pipes, pumps or tanks. Nickel-based alloys such as Hastelloy have shown resistance, but lifetime testing is still underway. Seals, bearings and valves need designs that tolerate both radiation and chemical stress. Germany's research facilities at KIT run loops for corrosion studies that operate continuously at full temperature for months. Results feed into design updates across the continent. Every measured success shortens the path to certification because regulators demand data proving that no unexpected degradation occurs under operating conditions. Public interest in nuclear energy is rising as Europe searches for stable sources. Molten salt reactors promise fewer long-lived waste products and inherent safety compared to water-cooled reactors. Their factory-based approach could reduce costs and avoid multi-year construction delays. Floating or modular reactors allow flexible deployment near industrial users or coastal grids. If these systems perform as predicted, they could complement renewables by delivering constant heat. The success of European developers will influence designs under study in Canada, Japan and South Korea before the end of this decade. Molten salt technology blends nuclear physics, chemistry, and industrial engineering. It offers high efficiency, low pressure safety, and fuel flexibility. Europe now leads practical implementation through coordinated national programs and private companies that treat nuclear power as a product rather than a custom project. Each step forward, material testing, chemistry control, and regulatory approval moves the region closer to the first operating plants. The next four years will decide whether molten salt reactors shift from promise to production. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.